Good morning. How are you this morning? I'm wonderful. Aww. I'm excited. The you will be coming out. You are always excited. And that there's yeah. so much fun to talk to first thing in the morning. You get my day going <laughs> awesome. <laughs> good. Good. It's good to have that reputation. Well, and you know, with COVID, it's getting harder and harder to feel like you're with people. <laughs> so <laughs> Yeah, yeah. We just uh we just keep going out though. We uh, Especially you, of we're course. Just, yeah. We're just violators. We're just terrible. <laughs> well, you've kind of been a rebel from a while ago. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yes, that's true. <laughs> you know, finally, uh, one of my bucket list items has come true. Finally, something you worked on is something I worked on. A little yeah. Christmas movie came out yesterday between our mutual friend, Jen. Oh, the Farmer and the Bell. Yes. Yeah. I was, I helped do contributing writing on it as well as I was at the wedding. So although I'm probably a spec here and there during the, you know, scenes at the end where they put her real wedding in there, I was there too. Um, so we're so excited. Oh, that's great. And that's great. I don't know if you knew that she wrote that specifically about, I mean, for you to use, I mean, for you to be in because she remembered talking back when you did Dune B at the B&B and you're talking about your singing, like passion for singing. And so she, she, she wrote that so that you could be in there. She wanted to have you singing there. It was kind of, it was just kind of that cool to so have cool. you guys together. That was great. That was great. Yeah. Jan is, Jan is terrific. And uh, I think they're going to have great success with that movie. Well, uh, I, we need, we need fun. We need, uh, we need love and laughter. And of course, we need cars. Well, uh, <laughs> some more than others, but I'm with you on that. I like your version of what people call cars. I, some of the more modern things, I'm not as cute on as like, yeah. I so I'm so excited. Like you're bringing everybody back to the land of the living a little bit at least. So I'm gonna let you tell it because you tell things better than anybody. You're a great storyteller. So I want to. So you sell us on Stand On It because I'm I'm so excited about this movie. Well, thank you, thank you. Me too. I wanted to make a uh, a Smokey and the Bandit tribute or a Smokey and the Bandit like movie since I was on the set of Smokey and the Bandit back in '76. Uh, so this more more so than the 40th anniversary of Dukes of Hazard. Oh wow. When I got in, uh, yeah, yeah. When I I got together with my friends and my father-in-law, and we basically built this this uh, challenger for the movie. Had T tops cut in it. Had a special hood made. Had pinstripes that my father-in-law and I put on it. Uh, painted the wheels gold. I mean, we we have invented a Chrysler version of the Pontiac Trans Am from uh -huh. Smoking the Bandit, and I'm a car nut. So when, when, uh, and I wrote it and I knew we were going to start filming, but when that car was actually in my driveway, I felt truly like I was about 16 years old again. <laughs> and, and, uh, yeah, so it's, it's so exciting for me. As I said, even more exciting than the 40th anniversary of Dukes. This to me is, is really coming full circle for my, you know, now I can say I've officially started. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah. and this was pre now some people may not, may not know, but that's pre Dukes of Hazard you were in Smoking the Bandit. Yeah. yeah <laughs> 70, 76, two years before Bo, um, I was I was on the set of Smoking the Bandit. I, I uh, BS'd my way onto the set. I got there <laughs> and makeup, breakfast and lunch and uh, spent the day with Jackie Gleason. Oh my um, gosh. Yeah, so it was uh, it was pretty cool. So I was sitting there talking with Jackie Gleason, uh, and no one had met Buford just yet. Ah. Uh, yeah, so it was uh, it was pretty great. And now, uh, forty two years, forty four years later, we're close to the same uh, age, so we don't got to put dates yeah. out there like that. <laughs> just kidding. A couple of weeks. A couple of weeks later. There you go. Um, now we have made this movie that is so, I, I got to say, it's so clever. Because in the movie, I play 
me or a guy who was on a show. Uh, and I, I say, uh, the gal asked me my, my name and I tell her, oh, my name is, is John, but most people call me Duke. And she says, of course they do. <laughs> <laughs> oh. so, uh, so we are aware that there was a great movie where someone was bet uh, $80,000 they couldn't go from Atlanta to uh, Texarkana and get 400 cases of beer and bring it back. And this one, I'm at, at my Bose Extravaganza, at my big event, which we had anyway, yep. by the way. Yeah, of course. Uh, we didn't we moved it, but we still had it. Um, so I am bet half a million dollars that I can't go from Holden, Louisiana, to Austin, Texas, pick up 400 cases of beer and bring it back in 24 hours. And I'm in a hammock, just like Bert was, wearing a red shirt, just like Bert was. And I look at the guy and I say, that was a movie. It was a great <laughs> movie. That was a movie. And it, in the movie, it was 24 hours. So we, we are a movie that is aware that we are a movie in a movie. It's a little it's a little hard to explain that but it's hysterical when i watch people watch it and they they uh, they see the uh the references to smoking the bandit the similarities between this and smoking the bandit and the characters realizing that that's happening as it's happening it's 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 pretty cool the movie within the movie is really cool you know i was actually um in georgia back in uh, August, September, and I actually saw where you used to have the boar's nest and all that. Like the, oh yeah, I had been yeah. right there in Co like by Covington. I guess it's Covington, Georgia. So yeah, that's uh, you just crossed the line in the social, yeah, the social circle. Yep, that's where the boar's nest is. Yep, and I that, was just there about a month ago. I, I stopped by to see the old boar's nest. It's well, we had a fan. Uh, his name's Kyle Patterson, right in, is the Boar's Nest franchising. He wants to open one. <laughs> yeah, I don't think it is. We're, we're talking about doing it. Bo's Boar's Nest or Bo's Nest. Oh, that's that's <laughs> clever. I think I think people will come flocking. You know, it's funny. I do too. You know, it's funny because when whatever I tell people I'm going to interview you, it it goes down to either cars or, of course, Dukes of Hazard. Um, and one of them, Adam McAbee, he asked, can you still slide on top of the car and go through the window like you did? Absolutely. Absolutely. I was just, Absolutely. I knew that answer. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And, um, uh, yeah. and then Meredith Holland, I like her question. She said, how far or how high has the generally jumped like the highest and the longest, you know, and were you in it when it happened? I was not, I was not in it. That's crazy. Uh, <laughs> I believe that the um, Alan Wyatt Jr. still has the record. Uh, it was uh, 187 feet. Oh my gosh. Uh, he jumped over the train. Oh. Um, and because he had to clear the train, I, I, the, the, uh, the video I've seen of it looks to me like he's about 20 feet in the air. It's crazy. Oh my goodness. And he lands on the pavement. Oh, that's, it's scary. Oh. Yeah, it's, it was very scary. Um, in Stand On It, we jumped, uh, we jumped our car, and it wasn't me jumping it. I did all the drive. I did not jump the car. Because um, you just never know how that's going to turn out. Stuntmen are more than just people with, uh, with heavy feet. I mean, they know how to take all the necessary precautions. Yeah, they know, they know how to follow that out without yeah, causing. Yeah, I think. I think this jump was 160 feet, 155, 160 feet. Wow. Um, yeah, it's pretty great. And it's over a river. Uh, and he landed in sand on the other side, and which seems like it would it would be softer and better. It's not. But it's <laughs> not. Yeah, it's not because it stops you so quick. Yeah, the friction as soon as you hit. Yeah, you kind of yeah, nose in and... and uh, but the cool thing is, one of the cool things is that the car that, that uh, James Smith, that's who jumped out, um, still ran after the jump. Oh, my God. And I'm going to bring it. I, I believe I'm going to put it in a car hauler uh, later today, and I'm going to bring it to uh, all the drive-ins. So part of our car show will be the car from the movie that they're about to watch. Now, you got to uh, tell us that this is the coolest thing 
that you have done with the stand on it because it's not your typical movie pre premiere at your local theater. So I want you to tell people how you're doing this because it's so cool. Well, we're doing, we have a, uh, I'm going to show up with my band. So uh, I'm going to have Cody McCarver with me, going to have Keith Burns with me, and my band is called the Stars and Bars Band. And we're going to do about a 90 minute concert uh, before the movie. So we'll be playing music that's in the movie you're about to see. And then when the movie, when the movie shows, hopefully people go, Oh my gosh, I just heard that song. That's great. Um, which is kind of unique. And, uh, we also open up early. We've got VIP tickets available. I, I believe the gate opens at two o'clock for that. And those folks will be, there's a meet and greet and we'll just kind of hang out and questions and pictures and I'll sign your lunchbox if you bring one. Uh, we'll have, uh, t-shirts and merchandise there, but we really, uh, it's limited. There's not, I don't think there's ever more than, than, uh, 30 people at that. And, uh, we really get to hang out. We do sound check. I'll probably ask you to move a speaker, you know, help us, help us set up. And, uh, we have a, a really good time. And during that time, if you're a truck driver with a CDL license, then, uh, you're also welcome to come. You can bring your big rig and park it, uh, not your trailer, but your tractor. Oh my uh, gosh. Park it, park it in the back and, and uh, you can come at the same time as VIPs and you don't have to pay for a VIP ticket. Um, we want to say thank you to all the truck drivers who've been keeping our shelves stocked over this, this last uh, insane time everybody's had to put up. Absolutely. And you know, you this is coming Friday, which you're calling Orange Friday. I love that. Uh, November 27th, it, it'll be on Cineflix, D-O-D, dot com. That's and, correct. But, and the tickets, they can go to, I'm guessing, John Schneider Studios dot com. <laughs> John Schneider Studios dot com, yep. Um, or if they can, uh, they can do that, the easiest thing to do, because it'll take you to Cineflix, it'll take you to the concert tour, it'll take you everywhere, um, is just download my app. It's free. Um It'll work on your Android or on your iPhone, and then it'll it'll give you show times. It'll tell you exactly where we are, when we are, and uh, you can get tickets through there as well. Uh, oh, of course, you can just show up at the drive-in and get your tickets. That's true. Um, <laughs> yeah, you can do that too. Um, I don't know what the what the current restrictions are. Um, they, yeah, there's a lot of them. <laughs> just depending yeah. on where it depends on where you're at. I mean, it's. The South is a little more, you know, rebellious. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. Well, we ought to be. Yeah, yeah. exactly. So, you know, crazy. well, that, that, that goes right into a fan question. Charlie Winchester asks, what's your opinion of barring stars and bars on the top of the General Lee? <laughs> oh, God, I, I, I named my band Stars. I was like, um, I think that kind of answers that question. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I, I not a fan of that. I would never take it off my car, and I would. I, I don't believe people can tell me what I believe by virtue of having that flag on my car. It, it's it's what the flag means to me, not what the flag means to you. That matters to me. There you go. Um, and the flag in my in my mind, that flag has always been a. Uh, kind of a unifying symbol that, that uh, unifies people together to fight against an oppressive society or, or an oppressive uh, mandate like we're dealing with right now. Right. Um, I, I think people ought to be flying that flag uh, because it means we've had enough. Yeah, exactly. And, and, it's, uh, and it has absolutely, in my mind, I realize to some people it, it is a racial thing. Not to me at all, never has been, never will be. And uh, I think we should be flying and saying, no, no, no more mandates. Nope, um, we're done. We, we did this. We played this. We played this game. We played by your rules. And now we're going to be back to being free American citizens. And we are going to exercise our right to peacefully assemble. And we are going to trust people that if they are not well, they will stay home. But we are not going to force everyone to stay home and we are never ever going to close another church another place of worship because a governor said to no thank you 
Uh, well, I, I feel I just had a preach, and I feel like I should be like saying amen and hallelujah, amen. hallelujah. Yeah, well, Give a Tyler Perry yeah. hallelujah. <laughs> hallelujah. That's right. Oh my gosh, Medea. Oh, no doubt. Like so, what? One of Meredith's other questions. She asked. She said, "Your faith in Christ has changed your life." She wanted to know: Was there a particular time that you feel like the Lord just spoke directly to you about something like? you know, were just was jarring basically were kind of a wow moment in your life? Uh, well, gosh, it's been so long ago, but yeah, there was, uh, there was a time in a, I was playing music with a friend in a church sitting in the back where, where people who don't feel they belong there always sit. Yeah. And, uh, uh, there's a, a place in the, in the service where the pastor would ask people to, uh, or invite people to come and kneel and pray. Right. And they did, and um, I saw a little a little old white man being helped up off the floor by a very large young black man with gold chains. And uh, and then the little old fella gave him a hug, and I, I saw in that moment I saw uh, Jesus, um, and I I remember distinctly saying, I want that. I want whatever that is. I want that, and uh, you know, your perspective changes when that happens. And it, it, it doesn't have to shift a whole lot, but it shifted enough for me to uh, to accept Christ, to believe, to believe uh, all of a sudden that all of that was true, and not just so much storytelling. Um, and then, not much longer after that, I wound up. I did a movie called Stagecoach, and I wound up living with Johnny in June. Johnny Cash, and Johnny oh. Cash uh, where I saw that you could be a uh, you could be a believer and also be scarred and flawed and rough around the edges. Johnny was all Johnny that. was he was that, and we all needed to hear that. Like he, yeah. we needed to watch him play out his life and see that you can struggle and be flawed and make really bad decisions and still have the same faith and still be trying to get back up when you, yeah. you even knock yourself down sometimes. But yeah, that he was, that's his huge inspiration to me. Oh yeah. And not running around everywhere and trying to pretend you're nicer than Jesus. Right. You know? And you're oh. just having a great, Oh, I'm so blessed. I mean, I, I mean, I understand that, but you know, sometimes it's, it's <laughs> okay. They close your church down there. They're telling you, you can't have Thanksgiving with your family. Uh, and and yet when I say how are you, you say oh I'm so blessed. It's yeah, cool. my mom says the sometimes people are so heavenly minded they're no earthly good. <laughs> oh, I like that. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> and then it comes from the old farming family in Texas. Like we, they just everything's just very real on a farm. I raised a cow named Rascal, became to love it, eventually became to eat it, and you just you know you're. Everything yeah. there's no hiding on on a in a farm situation. <laughs> Everybody's kind of just it's kind of like we kind of have a a bad form of Dukes of Hazard going on. <laughs> we <laughs> we we didn't our stunts weren't so cool. The cars weren't as nice, and you know. But I'm pretty sure moonshine was uh, was abundant. <laughs> Good, yeah. Moonshine. Uh, moonshine makes everything. Well, better. and you get to do this movie again, uh, another project with your beautiful wife Alicia. So, yeah, sure did. and sure did. I'm, I'm so excited. So everybody go out there and get tickets and, and be the rebel that John needs you to be and get That's out right. there. And are you going on, you're going to go touring soon, hopefully, because you, you left, you know, unfortunately, right before COVID, I'm sure you had all kinds of plans to do that. Oh, well, we did. We had, uh, we got a hundred, hundred, uh, dates booked. Uh, uh but yeah, we'll be there with the band. So we are, this is our tour. We are showing up. It's live and in person. Um, and I say that because there's a, a quite a number of folks who are saying that they're playing the drive-in circuit, but they're not really. They're just uh -oh. showing a movie. They're showing a movie of them playing oh, music okay. at a drive-in. Like a satellite thing or something. A satellite thing or, yeah. or just a recording. Or just a, a recording. DVD. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, recording. Not, so, uh, well. I'm Not us. We are there. We are. If you're cold, we're cold. We're going to have a great time. 
And if they can't get there, you can you can buy and rent and all of that on the same day on November 27th, right? Yep, November okay. 27th it comes out on Cineflix DOD, and no, uh, pardon me, December 4th it comes out on DVD. Uh, and that you can get at johnschneiderstudios.com. All right. Well, I tell you, you are such an um, uplift every day I ever talk to you. And like I said, after a few years of interviewing you, I finally can say we're on the, we got on one project together. We weren't in the same place at the same time, but um, behind the scenes, I was like, oh, yes, please bring John. And then the whole Dune be will like, you know, like come back and. But at least, at least she didn't take your guitar and smash it. <laughs> that you know, like yeah, my gosh, yeah, Jen didn't smash this guitar. Yeah, yeah, you have to keep her away from that one. Uh, yeah. Well, I thank, one. thank you. So oh, and that was so great. And this, yeah, uh, and you were so great. I love. There's probably nobody better to sing of country holly jolly Christmas than you. You just like I would, when she said it, you you were one the one she wanted. I was like yes oh please please try to get him. <laughs> I was like it's it's so you're so infectious with your happiness. So you did a fantastic job. Thank you for pulling off yet again amazing thing. And we can't wait to see the new movie. And you have a wonderful blessed day. And you and Alicia have a wonderful blessed holiday season. Thank you. We certainly will. Back at you. you All take right. care and I'll, I'll talk to you again soon. Absolutely. Bye. All right. Terrific.